Space is no stranger to the unexpected. From flowers floating in zero gravity to a seamstress who stitched her way into history. Even a rogue sandwich nearly caused disaster. And for one man, the journey to the moon didn't end in life, it began after. These are some of the strangest things ever sent to space. やっぱり花とか植物っていうのはもうすでにこう完成された一つのもう誰しもが美しいと認めるものでそれいわゆる美の象徴だったりとか生命の象徴であるってことはもうみんなが理解していることであの僕の手を加えることによってそれをさらに
あぶり出していく導いていくっていうのはが目的ですね。Hi, welcome to Great Big Story Questions. Please state your name and your specialist subject. I'm Stuart, I'm from London, and my specialist subject is brilliant. Let's start the clock. Instead of memorizing, which brand uses hands on problem solving, a learning method proven to be six times more effective than watching lectures? Pa pass. The answer was brilliant. Next question. Coding with Python, predicting probability, vector graphs, and improving large language models are all lessons you can find in which interactive learning app? Oh, I don't know. Pass. It's brilliant. Last question. In 2023, it was found that Americans spend on average 4.5 hours on their phones per day. Which platform builds your personal and professional growth by converting some of that time into learning? Really don't know, pass. Really? It's brilliant. That's the whole book. I give up. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash great big story or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Learn by doing. With brilliant. Astronauts have to deal with a lot of dangers in space deadly debris, harmful cosmic rays, and sometimes a corned beef sandwich.、Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. In the 1960s, at the height of the space race, space food was either compressed into utilitarian packages or pureed into a tube. <sighs> NASA did this in part to reduce the dangers free floating crumbs could pose, like wreaking havoc on the space capsule's instruments. During the Gemini 3 mission, astronaut John Young、Roger. didn't quite get the memo when he snuck a contraband corned beef sandwich into space. Ooh. Sure, the sandwich could have caused a life threatening accident. But hey, wouldn't you want to know how a sandwich tasted in space? Here's how the event played out between Young and his co pilot, Gus Grissom. Elapsed time of 022825. Roll left, 55. What is it? Corned beef sandwich. Where did it come from? I brought it with me. Let's see how it tastes. <gasps> Smells, doesn't it?、Mm. Yep, it's breaking up. Is it? I'm gonna stick it in my pocket. It was a thought, anyway. Yep. Not a very good one. And NASA and Congress didn't think so either. Young was reprimanded for his actions, but luckily for him, the incident didn't derail his career. He later was part of the Apollo 16 mission and walked on the moon. But that time, he made sure to leave his packed lunch at home. It's July 20th, 1969. Across the country, an estimated 650 million Americans have tuned in to watch the first men land on the moon. Also watching is Joe Thompson. You don't know her name yet, but without Joe and her sister seamstresses, those men would have never made it to the moon and back again. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. My name is Joe Thompson, and back in the 60s, I sewed. On spacesuits for Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. And we would bury the thread like that and see now it's tucked under. When I was about six or seven, was when my aunt taught me about sewing so that I was able to make a pretty decent doll dress. <laughs> I am proud I was a seamstress and I'm glad that what we did was a great success. But the seamstresses really have gone undocumented. Right there, that's me. Without our attention to detail and our dedication, they would not have been able to do what they did. 
1966, Joe was recruited onto an elite team of seamstresses by former bra factory ILC Dover. In the years to come, she'd help create some of the most complicated technology of the 20th century. There were layers of insulation. The cemented area that held the air when they inflated it, that was the inner layer. Then there was an outer layer. Inside even all of that, he had like a spandex suit that had tubes running in through it. Then there was a neck ring that the helmet attached to. It was quite a engineering marvel. <laughs> My job required me to do things that were technical and challenging. When we cut the uh, items out, it had to be placed back on the pattern to be accepted. And it was not more than a 64th of an inch. The tolerance of a 64th of an inch is very small. It's um, probably not much more than a hairbreadth. If you made a needle hole by stitching wrong somewhere, when the suit was under pressure, then the suit would leak. If his suit started leaking air, there's only one thing could happen, and that would be he wouldn't make it back home. Fifty years ago is a long time. I think it was fairly early in the evening. It was when he got out and stepped on the moon that I really felt like this is the final test of what we did. I had a small black and white TV with not a whole lot of good reception. I suppose there was more people there, but to me I was the only one there and I was the only one that was responsible for this man being on the moon, holding my breath to make sure he made it back again. Every time I see the moon, it reminds me of all the people I worked with and what we, we made, and I look up there and I think, a man was actually on that moon, and he actually wore something that I had my hand on. Can't believe it. <laughs> For as long as I knew Eugene, he had his sights set on space. All these years later, I can't believe he's still up there, my man on the moon. Eugene and I were married 46 years. I first met Eugene when he was studying geology at Princeton. He would tell me about all the secrets the Earth held. And of course, his favorite, those impact craters. Soon enough, he got me to fall in love with those rocks too. After the kids had grown and were out of the house, I was looking for something to do and Jean suggested, maybe I would like to see things through the telescope. We spent our days holed up in Lowell Observatory When Kennedy announced that they were going to send a man to the moon, Gene was terribly excited. Gene wanted to go to the moon more than anything else. Then he got the medical test, Addison's disease. His immune system wasn't protecting him the way it needed to. They couldn't risk him leaving Earth. He felt like <laughs> his goal had suddenly disappeared. At the same time, he was not a quitter. He set up his own mock lunar site and trained Neil Armstrong and the rest of the boys before they took off. Our focus changed over the years from looking up at the moon and looking at the sky to how the Earth was formed. We packed up and crisscrossed Australia, looking for signs of impact craters. On the day of the accident, we were just looking off in the distance, talking about how much fun we were having. And then suddenly there appeared the Land Rover in front of us. There was no time to think. The two vehicles collided and Jean died. I had a call while I was in the hospital. She said, 
They're about to send a mission up to the moon. I wonder if you would like to put Jean's ashes on the moon. And so I said, I think that would be wonderful. The whole family was there to wave Jean goodbye. After the mission was completed, it uh, ran out of fuel and it crashed into the moon. And that's where Jean's ashes are now. Suddenly, the man who spent his whole life studying craters had made his own impact. I miss him always, but to this day, I can look up at the moon and imagine him there with his rocks looking down at me. He still lights up every single one of my night skies. <laughs>